I will not defend being an American under any circumstance until it's time to defend this. Yeah, yeah, I'll defend her all day. Welcome to my room after hours. This is the time where the magic begins. You know what kind of magic I'm talking about. I have a candle lighting, just go back from work. It's like nine o'clock at night and I'm filming a video because I can. I work a lot this week. I only have one off day and I'm gonna spend it rotting in my bed, so. We're gonna maximize, yeah, yeah, we're gonna maximize time. Tonight's video is for the girls and the girls only. I'm gonna be recommending you some books as it's winter time. We're all in a very introspective, like somber mood, but also as the year ends and we do another year of this nonsense, another year, another year, another year of failures and disappointments. No, but actually this video is in fact gender neutral and I just wanted to give a few book recommendations on eras of your life. I've been reading a lot of books lately and thinking oh, this is so good for like a this era, like a blank era, you know what I mean? So that's what we're doing tonight. So I decided to take it upon myself and pick up a few eras. You are going through at least one of these, at least one of these. I'm looking at my laptop, there, you gotta be going through one. All right, so first we're gonna start off with the career era. This is for the person who has maybe recently graduated university and um, is really trying to delve into the field and just every single aspect of their career or passion because my degree is not at all related to what I want to do. <laughs> I think it's also appropriate to call it a passion era. So for your career slash passion era, I'm going to be recommending Devotion by Patti Smith. This book is an amalgamation of like everything really from travel entries to memoir-like writings to like fiction. It primarily pertains to what does writing mean to Patti Smith? Why does she write? Uh, why does she consider it her you know passion? But also what inspires her to write and where she gets her inspiration from. I think when it comes to literature, that centers around career a lot of the books at least um th ones that are popular with people my age are ones that are definitely like reminiscent of like a my year of rest and relaxation kind of feeling like i want to say uh that novel i don't know who writes it but there's no such thing as an easy job also careering by daisy buchanan also the new me by hallie haley I, I, I don't know a lot of those books can take on a theme of like a very jaded female protagonist who just like hates her life and also hates her job and while those are fun to read sometimes i wouldn't say it's inspiring or motivating to any kind of extent like at all like we literally have that and then at the other side of the spectrum it's like girl boss i really liked how patty smith considers writing and other like mediums of art to be a call to action like it's almost as if we create these bodies of work as to respond to or like answer to other bodies of work it's like a very practical but still very profound take next we're going to talk about the it girl era it girl this it girl that <laughs> for everyone's it girl era i'm going to be recommending dead end memories by banana Mo banana yoshimoto okay now when one thinks it girl do they necessarily think very somber kind of freaky tear inducing works of like japanese literature no, but I think the works of Banana Yoshimoto are like things that an it girl would read. Do you know what I mean? Dead End Memories is a collection of, I think, five short stories about women who have suffered, uh, you know, like pretty traumatic circumstances in their life. Some have not, and they're all headed towards a journey of healing. Actually, not all of the stories are about that. One is about a literal couple that dies and they become ghosts. So I think the stories of Banana Yoshimoto are a little bit like strange or a little bit weird, but they're very beautiful and they incorporate like elements of the human condition and the human experience that just makes their writing so touching. I just gave Banana Yoshimoto they them pronouns. It's giving libtard. It's like cool girls read Banana Yoshimoto. You know what I mean? Like it girls read Banana Yoshimoto. It's a Banana Yoshimoto winter. Moving on, we're gonna go to your heartbreak era. Now, I've never been heartbroken before. I don't, my brain doesn't even like hold the capacity to know what that feels like. So I truly, I, I can't recommend, like literally beats me, don't know. But it's no secret that a heart can be broken, you know, through many facets. It's not just romantic love that breaks a heart. So I'm just gonna work with what I got. I don't read books about heartbreak. I, I've never been heartbroken. <laughs> and I'm gonna recommend uh, In Memory of Memory by Maria Stepanova. It's about an unnamed narrator who is left through sift 
left to sift through her dead aunt's old apartment um and her aunt by the way is a compulsive hoarder so there's a lot in there there are letters there are diaries there are pictures there are postcards there's a lot of stuff all of these mementos and memorabilia belong to uh her family they're i think russian jews and they're um it's all about their life about them living in russia in the 19th century 19th or 20th century i almost said century i think it's really important for me to read at least one book like this every six months so i can continue to feel the personal narrative that i'm better than everyone else you know what i mean you know what i mean it's like i'm not just reading fiction come on now i'm reading this i'm reading this i'm reading this i think something that the author does really well in this book is that they reflect on like the nature of memory and what memory can mean to us and how it's i guess like encapsulated in these like little physical very tangible uh, pieces, but also how that reflection of memory also kind of affects the people that are left with it, you know? Um, and I think that is something that is very heartbreaking. This next era goes out to all my lover girls out there, all my lovers, my lovers, the emotionally in tune, the ones who just love love. It is in their genotype, basically. They can't help it. For your lover era, I'm going to be recommending Near the Moon by Anais Nin. I talked about this in my last book video. Anais Nin was a novelist and an essayist and just a true lover girl, a true it girl. I talked about this in uh, the Zodiac uh, video, but she, uh, she married two men at the same time. That's baller. And if you want to be reminded of love, if you want to bask in you know, the writings of love, everything that love has to offer you, I recommend you read a book like this. Just like very profound and personal. It feels like you're reading her diary because you kind of are. Tellings and writings about love and life and everything that encompasses, you know, a person um, and the love they have to give, but also the love that they receive from other people. And I think it's very sweet. Um, This next era, I, I'm not gonna make any jokes about because it's one that I'm sure a lot of you are in. A lot of you are in and I and you know I don't speak of it lightly and that is your mental illness slash fem cell era. Now I don't think these two eras are mutually exclusive. I don't think if you are in your mental illness era you are a fem cell but I do think if you're in your fem cell era you are mentally ill. I do. Yeah. And so for that era I'm gonna be recommending you The Girl in the Purple Skirt by is it Natsuko Imamura? Is it The Woman in the Purple Skirt? The Woman in the Purple Skirt i'm so sorry it's called the woman in the purple skirt okay two nameless characters one is the woman in the purple skirt and one is the woman in the yellow cardigan the woman in the yellow cardigan is stalking the woman in the purple skirt she manages to indirectly by not speaking to this woman get the woman in the purple skirt a job at where the other woman works at she begins to stalk her some more at work she stalks her even more and you know some freaky stuff goes down the antagonist in that book definitely needed some meds definitely needed like a psychologic a psychologic evaluation and she was a femme cell she was weird she was a freak okay next your single era Woo! for your single era i'm going to be recommending you happy hour by marlo granado so i've talked about this book like a few times now on my channel anyway happy hour is about two 21 year old girls their names are isa and gala they move to new york for uh summer for the summer they barely have enough money for food and rent literally living on scraps they do very odd jobs around the city um but by night they are very glamorous very charismatic beautiful young comedic party girls and they find themselves in the scenes full of new york's most elite right like famous famous actors and writers and musicians and things like that and it truly it's oh, ooh. i hope the lover girls don't come for me excuse don't come for me that level of just charisma and like social dexterity truly i'm not even trying to be a hater i i look i'm not i promise but i truly do believe that you can that kind of level can only be achieved by a single person it's science it's biology no one's gonna be 100 percent charming funny smart sexy flirty witty when they're not single do you know what i mean like you got someone breathing down your back someone yapping in your ear man 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 baby 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 you're not gonna have time to you know whip out the you're not gonna have time for that you're not gonna have time for that don't hit the play i hate the game so anyway that book is really good for your single era it's what you should that's what single girls do they have fun and they party and 
they're sexy and they're fun so i don't make the rules sorry we're gonna juxtapose all that happiness and fun with a with bad with with badness we're gonna move on to the your lost era this is your era where you don't at all have it figured out you've kind of lost your way and you've yet to really put the pieces together for this era i'm gonna be recommending all the lovers in the night by miko kawakami it's about ide she's like a in her mid 30s she's a freelance copywriter uh she's kind of a loser kind of a dork she's living and working in japan and she comes to the realization one day that she's like a shell of a person but ide oh also she's like drinking it's not looking good for her she drinks a lot that's all i'll say i can't spoil it this book is very like bleak it's kind of dark um and that's exactly what a lost era is we're gonna count down the last three eras that's four three three the third era is your therapy and healing era for that i'm gonna recommend none other than i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy i did an entire vi i dedicated an entire video to this book i read it i told you everything that happens in this book and i told you my thoughts on this book so if you would like to know i direct you to that to that video is it this way or is it this way i hate celebrities i think they should all eat dirt i'm not gonna read your celebrity memoir this is the only celebrity memoir that exists and that is important. Jeanette McCurdy is the star of the hit show iCarly on Nickelodeon. This book is a tell all about her relationship with her very, very abusive mother, how her mother got her into acting in the first place, how her mother gave her a violent eating disorder, and how her mother was just generally a freak. Her mother dies from cancer and she begins on a journey of healing and figuring herself out, figuring everything in her life out. I love this book so, so much. I didn't find it funny. People called it funny. I don't think it's funny. The second era is your just figuring it out era. You're just figuring it out. You are in a very aimless place in your life. You are, it's like absolutely no thoughts, just vibes. This next book is in fact in my car. I don't feel like going downstairs to the garage to get it you're gonna have to trust me that i have it but it is everyone in this room will one day be dead someday be dead and it's one of those by emily austin <laughs> it's about a girl i forgot her name she's really annoying i don't really like this book that much she has like health and death anxiety relatable she gets fired from her old job takes on a new job at a catholic church and you know starts to really delve into death and what death really means this book while it made me very morbidly aware of my own existence and mortality i think it's oddly very comforting i think it's great for a figuring it out era it, it makes something as daunting and complex and terrifying as death seem just a little make a little bit more sense i'm recommending you two books for this era lizard by banana yoshimoto another banana yoshimoto beast is a collection of short stories it's all about young adulthood what it means to be a young adult, young adults, and how they relate and interact with their parents and their partners. This book is like the definition of literally figuring it out. It's like when you're young and like you get married, but also you still have to like work with and cooperate and, and interact with your parents. It's quite literally you're figuring it out. Lastly, your villain era. Now a villain era is truly case by case there are so many things that can trigger a villain era you losing your job getting dumped losing a friend getting screwed whatever whatever it is i am recommending yeah yeah yep yeah, mm -hmm. good old ben affleck and that woman whose face is very very creepy i don't know the actress name but she plays a she plays an unsettling character amazingly well this book is about nick and amy they get married nick sucks surprise to no one by their fifth wedding anniversary amy disappears spoiler alert she uh framed nick for her death because he was cheating on her so i think there are two critical points of consciousness in a young woman's life when you actually gain consciousness like as a person and not a baby at like age six at least for me my memory is so awful my first memory is at like age six anything before then don't remember I, I i gained i spawned in my teacher miss leifer's first grade classroom but there's also another point where you figuratively open your eyes and gain social consciousness to the intricacies and kind of like plights of the feminine experience what it means to be a woman but in like a in like a fundamental kind of way like a sociological kind of way that is all encompassing i'm talking sexism i'm talking gender roles i'm talking I'm, I'm talking misogyny and not in like a scornful like a femcel kind of vibe 
for the girls who like want to get married and they love men or whatever but in a way that when you gain this perspective of social consciousness it's like you almost can't go back like you can't unsee it you'll never be the same you read this book and books like these when you touch that point of consciousness for me it was 16 it was 16 years old that is all the books that i have for you today all the eras i do want to do this again but this time next time you give me eras like you do the work for me and then i will you know what i mean like thank you so much for watching let me know what era you're in right now i'm in my actually you know what era i'm in i'm in my trying to keep it together era i i just gotta keep it together i do i gotta keep it together for a little bit longer and then i can respectively crumble and then get back up and then whatever because life goes on but i'm in my i'm like Mm. and i'm doing good you can follow me on tiktok and instagram and all those other silly little platforms it's in the description i don't know why i said that i never said that. i never say that i need to go to bed so thank you so much goodbye get out now <laughs>